This video is sponsored by Wondrium. Stay tuned for a special offer for Arvin Ash viewers. If you're anything like me, on a particularly stressful day, you might have dreamed about going on vacation to some exotic, peaceful place away from the rat race of reality, or fantasized about teleporting instantly to Paris or Sydney or some other faraway place to meet up with a friend or relative. In an ideal world, there would be no long, expensive flights, no visa issues or other hassles holding you back. Sadly, physics rules out instant physical teleportation and makes even teleportation near the speed of light unlikely in the near future. But we live in an era of exponential technological progress, so even though physical teleportation is impossible, there is another kind of teleportation that is within our technological grasp, pretty much ready right now, and that is virtual teleportation. I don't have to tell you how more and more of our world is going virtual, and the pandemic only served to accelerate this advance. More and more of our people-to-people -people interactions are online than ever before. A 2021 study by YouSwitch showed that Americans spend more than three hours per day on social media, and that people in the UK spend more than 13 and a half hours per day in front of a screen. If you take seven hours of sleep into account, that leaves only three and a half hours a day that people are not in front of a screen. The statistics in other Western countries is probably similar. If we extrapolate this virtual transformation of our lives, it's not that difficult to project where we might be headed. The future of the human universe is probably the metaverse. Now, what the heck is a metaverse? Just like metaphysics is concepts beyond real physics, the metaverse is a world beyond the physical universe, and we are headed directly towards it. What will be the nature of this new paradigm? What will life be like in this strange new world? What promise does it hold and what new dangers will it create? That's coming up right now. The word metaverse is not new. It was coined about 30 years ago by sci-fi author Neil Stevenson in his 1982 novel, Snow Crash, where he used the term to describe a three-dimensional virtual world. And today, its meaning in simple terms is essentially the same. It means a virtual world. It's an extension of the real universe. It's a place you can be virtually either through some kind of avatar, which is a computer-generated representation of yourself, or simply have a point of view or POV access to this virtual world, all the while physically being anywhere you want, such as your living room. And just like in sci-fi movies, which rely more and more on computer-generated imagery, or CGI, if you can imagine it, it will be possible in the metaverse. For example, in the metaverse, teleportation is possible. We are allowed to bend the rules of physics there. The platform Second Life, which debuted in 2003, is often credited as the first metaverse. In many ways, it's a simple video game. It allows users to create avatars or virtual representations of themselves. Users live their life vicariously through them. They can travel to different worlds, called sims, participate in role-playing games, they can buy and sell products, and socialize with other Second Life residents. The goal of the game, if you want to call it a goal, is simply to be in a place where you can meet up online and essentially live a virtual fantasy life. Now, what companies are envisioning today for the metaverse is something similar, but on steroids. The gaming world has played an outsized role in creating a framework for the metaverse technology. Games often try to be as immersive as possible to increase your level of engagement. One way they achieve maximum immersion is through virtual reality, or VR. You're probably familiar with some VR hardware, such as a headset with built-in goggles containing a screen. Usually, there are also some handheld controllers that can track the movement of your arms and hands, with some buttons that allow you to interact with objects on the screen. These are combined with sensors in the room, so the VR system can track your actual movements relative to virtual objects on your headset screen. By wearing the VR headset, you can be completely immersed in the virtual reality world on your screen. The sensors around you translate your actual movement into VR. So if you turn your head to the left, the sensors pick that up, and the screen in your headset pans to the left. So you see what is to the left in the virtual world. And all this happens in real time. In Meta's presentation with Mark Zuckerberg last year, 
we see him join some friends on a fantasy spaceship. This is not some far out future technology, it's available today. So for example, if you had a VR headset and this spaceship simulation was available from Meta, you could participate as Mark Zuckerberg did in this VR spaceship, even though you may be physically at home in your living room. Your friends could likewise sit in their living room with a VR headset and join you in the virtual world. And because of the sensors recording your movements, you could move around in this world and interact virtually, just as shown in the meta video. This is basically where we are today. You can meet up in such virtual worlds using VR, or you can use it to make games or movies more immersive. This is a kind of virtual teleportation because you can use a VR headset to go anywhere in a virtual world. Another more educational use would be in virtual lab lessons. One can virtually create a chemistry or physics lab and try to explore science in a safe environment. If something explodes, no problem, because it's just an explosion on your screen, not in real life. This, of course, would rely on VR programming with scientifically accurate coding that realistically simulates chemical reactions and physics phenomena. This is not fantasy because we know these scientific fields quite well. So as long as we're not trying to simulate groundbreaking chemical reactions or quantum mechanics phenomena, we should be able to make realistic simulations that make learning safer, more engaging, more accessible, and less expensive, since constructing real labs and acquiring chemicals can be very expensive. This could be particularly impactful in poorer countries or less privileged school districts. For medical education, it's already proving useful as aspiring doctors can get experience by performing virtual surgery before trying it in the real world on a real person. This is already helping to improve healthcare. But we can go even further to take advantage of a potential metaverse being the extension of the real universe. We can bend the laws of physics. So for example, we could scale ourselves down to the size of ants to explore, for example, what life could be like for insects, or even simulate the movements and forces on a mode of dust. In an astronomy class, we could fly around in the solar system or pull the planets towards us for a closer inspection. In chemistry, we could zoom into molecules and look at their structure. Learning could be much more engaging. Now, in order to give you the full picture of the VR industry and the forces driving the technology behind the metaverse, we can't avoid talking about pornography. Currently, the use of VR in education is limited. It takes money and market demand for entrepreneurs to create these kinds of applications. We have to face the fact that the porn industry has been a major driving force and source of income for companies selling VR technology. This was the same during the early years of the internet when porn drove much of its growth. New technologies often tend to be expensive and unreliable. The porn industry has served as early adopters that not only pushed innovation, but helped the technology become cheaper and more reliable. For example, not only did the adult industry find early consumers to broaden the internet, but it also pioneered technologies we take for granted today, such as streaming video and online credit card transactions. Similarly, there are likely to be metaverse technologies driven by the porn industry. Some of the innovations that this industry is tinkering with are things like haptic feedback, when viewers can feel the sensation of touch by wearing computer-controlled sex toys, and creation of more realistic-looking avatars. Porn has had a big impact on current technology, and this trend is likely to continue in the future. But the industry is usually not talked about or given much credit, largely due to ideology. Now, the metaverse is not just about putting on a VR headset and then being in whatever fantasy world you want to be in. There is perhaps an even more high-tech way we can combine the fantasy world with the real world. I'm talking about augmented reality, or AR. Now, what is AR? It's like a combination of the real and virtual worlds. It's a seamless integration of the two. So, for example, you could show data on top of some real object or you could put a virtual 3D object on top of a real object. The latter is something like the game Pokemon Go, where players try to locate a CGI character by pointing their cameras to certain real-world locations. The character would show if the camera was in predetermined GPS coordinates. Virtual content added onto your real world can add a whole new dimension to reality. Your smartphone can already do this in simple ways, as demonstrated by the Pokemon game. There are more practical ideas for this as well. For example, an app called IKEA Places puts virtual CGI 
IKEA furniture onto your room as you view it from your camera phone. This allows you to see what it would look like in your room before you buy it. These are simple examples, but this AR technology could prove very powerful with even more sophisticated applications. You might remember when Alphabet Inc. launched Google Glass. Their vision, pardon the pun, was to make glasses that have a screen built into them along with a small camera. These glasses could then add virtual objects onto the real world around you. So for example, you could work on an empty desk typing away in the air. On your AR glasses, you would see two floating screens. As you typed into nothing, sensors on your hands interpret the motions of your fingers and translate them into actual typed letters. With hand gestures, you could open, close, and move apps on your virtual screen. Or say you want to play a game of chess with a friend who lives far away. If you both have glasses that are synchronized to the same metaverse, you could have a virtual game in front of you and play as if you were in the same room. Your hand gestures would move virtual pieces on the virtual chessboard. Such technology could also be used at work for meetings and collaborations. With such technology, a lot of meetings and even business travel could be reduced by moving them online. With the onset of the recent global pandemic and travel restrictions, we saw the world take steps towards this already. Some of this is also good for Earth. Studies showed that global pollution levels were reduced by 20% during the pandemic. Now, while many aspects of these technologies have a positive impact, I would be remiss not to mention some of their negative impacts. To make the metaverse a reality, it not only requires scientists, programmers, and artists to create the virtual worlds and applications that we need, but it also requires a lot of hardware, servers, devices, and more to run the virtual environments that would be part of the metaverse. Nearly all hardware requires energy in the form of electricity to run. Manufacturing the hardware itself would also take up a portion of Earth's resources, including energy consumed in the production process. It's not clear whether the positive will outweigh the negatives. Time will tell. We also need to be prepared for the profound societal, economic, and psychological impacts that this technology will likely have. For example, while social media sites like Facebook and Twitter have supposedly helped bring people together, not all aspects have been healthy for our social well-being. There are just as many or more lonely people today than there were 20 years ago when these sites were not around. A global study by Kaspersky Lab found that face-to-face -face interactions have decreased since the advent of social media, probably because many people find it easier to communicate online than in person. This leads to reduced real-life communication and social skills. So ironically, social media tends to kill social skills. There's also a growing concern regarding mental health of social media users with an increasing number of people getting depressed. Suicide rates have increased among younger people who tend to be the most voracious consumers of social media. So perhaps there is a link. Because of its impersonal and often anonymous nature, it opens up opportunities for nefarious social activities such as bullying and threats. I see this firsthand in the comment section of my own videos. Another big issue with the metaverse is privacy. If we start living more of our lives inside a metaverse with an avatar, how do we know that other avatars we are interacting with really are who we think they are? Maybe someone you think is a woman living in America is really a man in Belarus who has a false or stolen avatar of someone else. These technologies could be magnets for scammers. Protecting privacy also presents challenges for companies like Facebook. They make money by selling your data, but now you live in a metaverse created by them. They can see how you look, how you behave, and what you like to do. They will have even more information about you than ever before that they could sell. Do you really want to give away access to such private and often intimate data? Just like any new technology, there are pros and cons, profound benefits with new and unforeseen drawbacks that we will discover over time. Is this really all worth it? I don't have all the answers, but if history is any predictor, society has tended to enthusiastically embrace any technology that has allowed us to communicate more widely, save us time, or give us pleasure. A relatively fast adoption of personal computers, the internet, smartphones, and social media attests to this idea. Given that the metaverse will probably check all the boxes necessary for success, I have little doubt that we will embrace it. 
It's hard to resist the pleasures of living out your wildest fantasy or virtually teleporting to a beach in Hawaii after a tough day at work. The metaverse will have some huge benefits. We just need to make sure it doesn't end up plundering the real universe. If you're interested in learning more about the human impact of the metaverse, I think you'll enjoy watching a fascinating lecture series on Wondrium called How Digital Technology Shapes Us. It's a 24-part in-depth college-level exploration of how AI, online gaming, and computer technology is reshaping humanity from the alterations caused in our brains to changes in our memory capacity to psychological changes and effects on the very fabric of our democracy. It's taught by Professor Inder Viscontas of the University of California, San Francisco. She's a gifted educator with a knack for keeping your attention. You'll find many other lecturers like her on Wondrium, which has some of the best educators in the world. What I really love about the courses available on Wondrium is that they do not cover any subject superficially. They are in depth, covering many different aspects of a given subject. This is just the way I like to learn, and that's why I've been a member of Wondrium for a long time. I can't recommend them enough. You'll even see my testimonial at the bottom of Wondrium's homepage. It's really easy to sign up right now because they're offering a free trial and you can cancel at any time. So you've got nothing to lose and possibly a whole lot to gain. So if you want in-depth knowledge about the subjects you want to study, then be sure to click the special link in the description to take advantage of this free offer. That link is wondrium.com slash Arvin. That's wondrium.com Arvin. And you'll be supporting this channel when you sign up. So I thank you for that. And if you enjoy content like this and want more, then be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be informed the minute we post a new video. And if you have any questions or comments for me or other viewers, please leave them in the comment section. I try to answer all interesting questions. I'll see you in the next video, my friend. Many thanks to RT.AR for helping us create the augmented reality clips used in this video.